Um, ministers. Um, I, I very, very welcome this debate. And first of all, I want to thank ministers for what they have done in the weather crisis so far. And even though we have a few dry, bright days, um, the damage that has been done by the long wet spell um, just won't disappear with a few days with a few days of sunshine. And I suppose before I left home this morning, I, I, I walked at the paddocks for the cows, and the grass that's there for the second rotation is virtually non-existent. I suppose for a number of reasons. One, there was damage done by, by the cows the first time round. Secondly, there was no chemical nitrogen spread. And you know, all that is going to have a serious impact on grass production for the next couple of weeks. And you know, I think the war in Ukraine a couple of years ago, uh, when it started in Ukraine a couple of years ago, gave us Europe a shiver up their spine as regards food security. And I think you know, this weather event should do the same. And I think we've taken food security for granted for far too long. And you know, our agri food industry is the backbone of our rural economy. And our daily industry that some people would like to target and decimate um, is, is most definitely the driving force of, of rural Ireland. And we see milk production back significantly this spring. And um, that is going to have an impact on processors and their ability to pay a, a, a good milk price. And again, you know, that is, that is going to have problems on the bottom line for farmers in 2024. So hopefully, you know, Minister, you know, you announced 100 euros a hectare there for tillage farmers, and you know that is very, very welcome. You know, we are in the last week of April, and there's still a lot of a lot of ground to be sown. And I would ask you, you know, just to keep an eye on the year and see how tillage farmers are progressing and how the prof profitability is going to be in 2024. And if, due to the late sowing, that yields are significantly back, that you would re-examine whether there could be further support given as we get into the back end of the year. Tillage farmers had a very bad year last year. They had bad weather, they had bad prices, and they had bad yield. A, per, you know, a, a perfect storm um, to give a, a crisis in tillage farming. So I would urge you just to keep it monitored and see as the year progresses is further supports needed. And I suppose some tillage farmers are making decisions whether they'll grow crops uh, you know, for livestock farmers. And you know, I would say you know, that should be examined whether there could be an encouragement there to make that more, more viable, whether it is maize or beet uh, to grow. Because it's going to be difficult um, to, to balance, um, to get you know, us back into a plus further balance in 2024. Side, you know, you're, you're at a stage of the year where you should be walking the fields to know whether, you know, when will you cut silage in the next, next 10 days to a, to a fortnight early cut silage. And the reality is a lot of that land hasn't even got um, chemical, nitrogen, chemical nitrogen applied to it yet. And like I was driving around my constituency yesterday evening and there was a lot of land being cut, grass being cut off it. So as farmers could get you know, a fresh start to try and establish a, a, a silage crop, the main silage crop. So you're getting near the 1st of May, lads are cutting off and bagging the, I suppose, the stale grass that's on fields and trying to come with fresh regrowth. That will get slurry and chemical nitrogen now. And an awful lot will depend on what weather we get in the next six to eight weeks to determine what kind of, of, of silage yields will be there, what kind of store or fodder will be there. Will, will, will be there for, tw for, for the winter of 2024-2025. Minister, you gave a suspension to farm inspections for three weeks there during, during the worst of the weather. And I suppose I would ask you to, to go back to the previous three to four weeks and consider that farmers that you know, were inspected and for, you know, for various reasons might have suffered penalties. In particular, you know, I, I had a farmer on to me there with farmyard manure. He was cleaning, you know, cleaning out his calving pens. Normally in the springtime, he would take that to, to a field where it could be legally left for spreading um, you know, as, as, as you went later into the year, whether it was for reed seed or whatever, it, it would be later spread. 
Due to the weather conditions, he just couldn't get out of the yard. It was, it, was left, it, was, it was left in a heap in some corner of the yard. So there's various reasons why those inspections that happened in those previous three to four weeks, with the pressure that was on farms, where stock would normally be out grazing and were still all indoors, and you know fines were imposed. I would ask that that would be re-examined, and you know that that there would be. You no, know, I, I would go so far as to say that you know an amnesty for those farmers, or definitely that they would get a re-inspection um, to see you know that things that were completely outside their control, weather related and pure just physical pressure and mental pressure that was on farmers and that suffered fines during that period, that that would be re-examined. The other thing is, you know, the date for protein, the you know the reduction in protein feeding and uh, protein feeding for dairy cows. Obviously, you know, with the banding and um, stocking rates, etc., you know, this, um, this recalculation of, of the protein feed is most welcome. But this year, with, with cows being indoors an awful lot longer, you know, cows will have to be kept on a higher level of protein for longer. And I would ask the minister to, you know, to go to a first of May cut off for that, and that, you know, that the, the, the summer regime, as we would call it, for protein feeding, would start cleanly from the first of May. And I'd also ask that. That would be kept, you know, simplistic, Minister. We hear talks that there's going to be calculations of what was fed in the winter time and what's fed in the summer to calculate what reduction in protein will be used for, for, for the reduction in, in, in the organic stocking, stocking level for, for cows. You know, farmers at the moment with paperwork are getting completely frustrated about the bureaucracy that's there. So I'd ask the Minister that protein, that protein um, calculation and that the allowance that will be there for feeding a low-level protein during the summer months. Keep it simple, keep it on the calendar year, and don't have all these calculations and sums being done, and farmers wondering, you know, whether, wh wh you know, am I going to get this X allowance or Y allowance or Z? And, you know, the, the, the bureaucracy attached to um, derogation, etc., at the moment is becoming increasingly frustrating. Just on, you know, on the... You know, we have a lot of farmers out there who are at low intensity, Minister. And in a year, you know, low stock and intensity, and in a year when there is going to be um, pressure on building up further stocks, I would like you to consider that farmers on a low stocking rate who are limited with the amount of chemical nitrogen that they spread, that if they committed to growing extra, extra, extra silage for sale, that they would be given a derogation to allow them to spread more chemical nitrogen. I think this could work um, very well in increasing our supplies of both hay and silage in 2024. And I think it's something that, that should be looked at. And I think farmers would, 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 would greatly welcome it. And, you know, farmers on low stocking levels, you know, under 130, etc., are very limited in the amount of chemical nitrogen they can spread. So I think, you know, in a year that option should be given. Now, obviously, all low, all low intensity farmers wouldn't be interested in it, but some might be interested in it in doing it for sale to other farmers who would feel that they're going to be, that they're, that they're going to be short, short of fodder. So I'd ask you also, Minister, to consider, to consider that. The other thing, Minister, in this, in this back end and going back to tillage, is the straw incorporation. And, um, you know, straw has been non-existent for the last month or six weeks. And, you know, we are importing straw from the UK at the moment. And I think, again, while I would say most definitely maintain the payment for tillage farmers, and even if there had to be, you know, um, that, you know, some farmyard manure would have to make its way back onto tillage farms, um, you know, to, to, to keep the, 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 intent, the intent of that scheme in place, I think this year, with the, with, the, with the pressure that's going to be on further supplies, I think we have to re-examine that incorporation scheme and, you know, obviously the Tillish farmers to keep the payment there for them, but some way that they could get organic, organic manure back onto their land and still have their straw for sale, I think has, has, to, has to be examined. I suppose, you know, um, one thing that has to be learn from this winter is that storage storage and the need for very significant storage storage on all farms and I suppose I'm going to make a couple of points Minister uh, you know I don't think you know any of us that are in farming you just can't have enough storage storage 
and you know it was really one of the real things that put mental and physical strain on farmers this year was the fact when they would normally have no bother going out to spread slurry and, and, and spread it when you know the nutrients would be well taken up by land. Land was just untravelable. And uh, you know that, that went on all spring and it put huge pressure on, on farmers on farmers mentally, physically, etc. So I would urge that, you know, and I know in last year's budget you announced extra grand, grants under TAMS for slurry storage. I ask you to go back and even examine that further, and, and see about increasing that, that, that even, even, even more for farmers, because you know in our, in our battle with water quality, etc., slurry storage is a, is, is a key weapon in, in our armory um, to, to, win, to win that battle. And uh, I suppose this winter really, really, really brought it home to us. I suppose you know on that too, and on farm investments, and you know the VAT and the way the, the revenue have changed interpretation. Of, that, of, of, what's, of what's what's that rebatable, and you know we I have brought this up at a parliamentary party, uh, Minister, on a couple of, on a couple of occasions, and uh, we we have been constantly pre pressing Minister McGrath on it, and I think we are ex making progress at last with the revenue, and my understanding is that they're looking at it again, and that they're um, are committing to um, it's reverting to the, what was pre there for the previous 50 years. But I think we want to make this clear for farmers who are investing in, in infrastructure on their farms, that you know, the VAT rebate that was heretofore in place for you know, whatever, what, whatever they were doing, like this VAT issue was first brought to my attention 12 months ago, and it was for slurry bags was the first thing that revenue took away uh, the VAT rebate on. And slurry bags, you know, for, are used by small to medium sized farmers as a lagoon for holding slurry. And the revenue maintained that this, this slurry bag could be moved to another location. And like, you know, anyone that ever worked with, with slurry would know to move something that you held 100,000 gallons in slurry um, to another location. Um, it, might be, it, might, it, it might on paper be possible, but physically it, it, would, be, it would be complete com, a complete non-runner. And all through the last 12 months, they've increased the items that they have um, taken away um, the ability of farmers to reclaim VAT on. Now, I welcome that the revenue are gone back to the, to the drawing board on this, and we need clarity on this, Minister, because you know, constant investing in our, in, in our infrastructure and farmyards is essential. And I think that win this winter most definitely un underline, underline that for all farmers. And you know, you will be fighting hard to maintain our delegation, and you will be in Brussels fighting to maintain that as we, we move into 2025. And you will be the only minister out there looking for a delegation. And I think if we can show that we're investing very significantly in slurry storage on farms, it, it, will, it, it will be to our benefit. So, you know, Minister, I welcome all, this, all our, my government has done uh, on, to help farmers through this crisis. It was an extremely long, hard winter, extremely wet. It put farmers under huge physical pressure as well as financial pressure. And I know, Minister, as we go through 2024, you won't be found wanting if, if other situations arise due to this winter that farmers need extra support on.